Finley Wolf, and I'm here to talk today a little bit about my newest book, Victoria Finley Wolf, Playing with Purpose, a quilt retrospective. Everything I do in, in most of the books that I've already published has been talking about process, um, process and technique, process and looking and developing um, different ways for you to approach the projects that you're making. And this time, we get to look a little bit deeper into those subjects through essays that I'm going to be sharing with you and little bits of information that I think about when I'm um, starting a project and hoping that some of that will resonate with you uh, to look at some of your old projects and also look at some of your new projects because this quilt is, as it lists a quilt retrospective, showing that you're going to see my first quilt all the way through till the most current quilts that I've made and which is for me a very exciting thing to have done because there is great lessons to learn in just looking at your own journey and how far you've come. So this has been a real joy for me to look back to see where I started and maybe laugh at those and embrace those things that I did and to be able to see how far I've come and, and learn just from that process itself. So I'm excited to be able to share that with you. So the, the power in looking back at your work, one of the things I try to show and ask students when I'm teaching is not just to think about what you're doing at this current time, but to look at where you've come from and the things that you've done. Um, there is strength in looking and patting yourself on the back really to be able to see the kind of things that you were doing when you were starting out and where you are now because you're not the same quilter that you are today. Your color sense may have changed, your skill set should certainly have changed over the years, um, but being able to go back and look at projects where maybe you've gotten stuck, where you could pull those projects back out and look at them to see, well, now what can I bring to the table? Um, I spend a lot of time actually looking at antique quilts because I want to be able to look at them and, and think about um, why do they make connections in color combinations or why did they piece something a certain way not just looking back at my own work but looking at other people's work to kind of see you know what can I learn from that so there's always a lesson to whether whatever you're doing now and also whatever you did whatever your first quilt was so you might discount something that you've done previously but there's so many lessons to have learned and, and to accept that you've done and that's what's been really powerful about doing this book for myself has been able to go through hundreds of my quilts and you know maybe some of those quilts aren't the best constructed or the most interesting but a lot of them will have some really interesting lessons in them that I thought ah oh, well that was really cool look what I did there look what I did at that time and now look at how that's relating to what I'm doing now um, you know for someone who thinks that I'm always looking to see how I can get outside of my own box when I go back and I look now through the 140 some quilts that I have in the book I'm not always as far out of the box as I thought I was because I can see patterns to the way that I built quilts that I'm still doing from the very first quilt that I ever made. So that's the beauty of being able to go back to look at you know, your first quilts, your early quilts, and to what you do now to see what kind of things do you do over and over again because once you know the things that you do, then that gives you a stepping stone to change your process and to push yourself a little bit further. So the essays that I included in the book are delving a little bit deeper into um, some of the parts of the process that I really find the most interesting. So through looking, which as a quilt teacher, I find that mostly what I'm actually teaching, I might be teaching you technique or a way to work, but what I'm actually teaching you is how to look. Um, to looking a little bit closer at how fabrics are they're laying together, how the colors are relating to each other, um, again, looking at your process to see what did you do before and what can you do now to bring it up to date. Um, spending a lot of time thinking about the story and the, the, the body of what's going into the quilt. I think that for me that that's very important. That's not always the case, but that also helps to identify what is important to you in your own creative process and I think that that has a lot of value to it. Um, one of the other things I really related um, by looking back and reading and looking at my own work is that one thing I try to do when I start a quilt is I always consider myself a beginner. Just because I feel like I have a lot of different techniques and skills that I know how to do, I'm always coming at it from the sense of what am I doing here? What can I bring to the table? What new technique can I learn? I want to be able to start with a completely open mind and open palette and to see where that's going to take me. 
Um, and also remembering just to give credit for you know, that ugly quilt that I once made a long time ago. Because they're not all beauties, but there's still lessons to be learned in all of those quilts. One of my favorite quilts in the storytelling section is about a quilt that I had when I was a child. And if we were sick, my mom would go and she would get this special quilt out of the, out of the closet. And this is the only time we ever got to sleep under it. It was a red soft corduroy with an Indian cotton print on the back. And it was ridiculously soft and warm. And we would have to stay home on the couch all day and sleep under this quilt. And so we called it the sick quilt. So fast forward in my life, when I became a parent, um, and my daughter would get sick, and she would uh, be home from school, I had my mother send that quilt out so that we could continue that tradition. But by the time we got it, the quilt was already 40, 50 years old, and it was getting a little ratty, and she decided she needed to sleep under it like every day. So she actually slept under it for a few more years until it started to really fall apart, and I patched it and done all these things to it, and I thought, I probably need to make a new sick quilt. But I decided that it should probably be a get well soon quilt, uh, to carry those pos pos carry those um, the positive vibes to go with uh, the process of healing. So there early in, in when I found quilt blogs, uh, there was a challenge online, and the challenge was to make these wonky house blocks and some bottles and jars and all these things. And, and I took that as a challenge, and I actually made uh, the quilt that I call. Get well soon, chicken soup, um, it has a few other words on it, and it has a nurse and she's pouring medicine and incorporating all of these things about getting well. And it was a completely improvisational quilt top from beginning to end, and that's the quilt that she now, she likes to say that she doesn't really like to sleep under my quilts because I quilt the daylights out of them, but that's the quilt that she says, that's my quilt. So that's going to be hers for the rest of her life. So I love that it makes a tradition, because quilting is a tradition in its own self, but that the quilt can continue to have a life, and it will be part of our family the rest of my days, and hopefully the rest of her days. What do I love about the book? Uh, I absolutely love being able to look back and, and see the journey that I've been on all of these years, even before I considered myself a quilter. Um, always been an artistic person, always knew I would be an artist, um, and so it's been really exciting for me to be able to see how it's changed from being a painter, being a quilter, being a fabric designer, and, and having these full circle moments. I love being able to see my first quilt and still discover some other quilts of mine that I haven't seen along the way by going back and digging through the tons of bins of quilts that I have and finding quilts that I'd forgotten about, and really appreciating uh, the journey and the friends and everybody and everything that has happened um, since doing this professionally, really. Um, it's been a real joy to be able to see the quilts all together into one place. The joy that quilting gives me is community. The fact that I can make a quilt, whether it is going to be given to somebody who's maybe not in a joyful place, whether it's going to be a quilt hug, no matter what happens on the receiving end, it can be made from a place of joy. I can, I, what I also love is that I can travel anywhere in this world and ask where the quilters are and I immediately have friends. That's the part of quilting that I absolutely love, the community and to be able to share love just by sewing fabric together. The quilts that I think are truly special. I have a few quilts that have definitely been uh, benchmarked in my uh, career of quilting. Um, double Edge Love, the double wed my first double wedding ring quilt that won QuiltCon was definitely a process changer. So that's incredibly special to me. It's a spot in my timeline where I can mark where my process literally changed overnight, and that I I just I hold that dear. Another quilt that I absolutely love is my Mr. Swirl E. Bones quilt, because he was a great challenge for me to try to figure out how to use a novelty fabric, which I tend to avoid. So that was a great challenge, and he's just, he's just fun. He's just kind of 
shows joy just by looking at the quilt. He's clever, and I enjoy that one a lot. Um, and I think even my first quilt, as sad and sorry as it looks, <laughs> it had a great story attached to it, and uh, was something I probably wasn't supposed to do because I got in trouble for it, because I used my dad's upholstery batting inside of that quilt, so I'm kind of surprised it still actually has stayed all in one piece, but it is. Um, but that also shows the, the usefulness that we can do when we're determined to try to get something made. We'll pretty much use whatever we can to make that come to fruition. So those are probably my most special quilts. Do I have a favorite quilt? That's like picking your favorite child. <laughs> I have many favorite quilts. I can't say that I have one particular favorite quilt because the stories that go into or the part of life that happens when I'm making a quilt, sometimes it's just the process of making the quilt that becomes the favorite. And by the time I finish sewing those last few stitches on a quilt, I'm excited to start the next journey. That's the part that I really love. So I have a lot of favorites for a lot of different reasons. So I can't just pick one. Sorry. So I thank you for listening. I hope you've enjoyed hearing a little bit more about my book, Playing With Purpose, a quilt retrospective. You'll be able to find um, information at my website, vfwquilts.com, Instagram, just under my name, Victoria Finley Wolf, and on Facebook, Victoria Finley Wolf Quilts. Mm -hmm.